Good morning, everybody. Praise the Lord on this beautiful Tuesday morning. I have to think there for a moment. Uh, yeah, wonderful. Good morning. Good morning. It's good to be with you all again this morning. Um, yeah, there's a chill in the air. I don't know. I'm a bit, I'm a bit chilly this morning. Um, Praise God. Yeah, it's awesome. I it's trust that you. Sorry? Great to be Amen. with the family again this morning. Uh, it is uh, lovely. Uh, I trust that you have your cup of coffee with you. Uh, it's good to have a cup of coffee early in this morning. And uh, But of course the word is more important, but the two makes a wonderful combination. <laughs> Hallelujah. And for those, for those at work, uh, we just want to say have an awesome day at work. Mm. I know there are some people that are back, that, uh, that is back to work. Um, and... Um, yeah, we're thinking of you and we're praying for you that God will just protect you and uh, keep you safe and keep you under the blood. Um, but yes, we're excited this morning. Amen. I know that some people made a comment and said that we need to try and get the, the, the audio louder. It is a bit of a challenge, uh, but we'll try our best and, uh, <clears throat> and we trust that you will enjoy this time together. Thank, thank you for making the time this morning. Um, yeah, we're going to talk this morning, continue um, to share with you from God's Word uh, on the topic of fear. Uh, it's, uh, it, it is one of those emotions that people battle with, and uh, yeah, people fear for various things. But I'm going to ask Marlene to just read us a scripture, because we would love to encourage you today from God's Word. Um, so if you can just read for us that verse, please. Mark. Yes, I'm reading from the New King James Version this morning, and it's um, one, uh, one Timothy. Uh, I mean, Second Timothy, two, uh, one verse seven. Second Timothy, one verse seven. It says, "Yeah, for God has not given us mm. a spirit of fear, amen, but of power, and of love, and of a sound mind." Mm. I'm going to read this again. Mm. 2 Timothy 1 verse 7 For God has not given us a spirit of fear mm. but of power of love and of a sound mind Amen Very powerful verse, thank you Marlene uh, You know, um, when the Apostle Paul uh, wrote these words he wrote to a young pastor by the name of Timothy and Timothy was the pastor in the church in Ephesus uh, one of the churches that, that Paul used to often visit. And, and Paul was like a, a father. He was like a mentor to this young man, Timothy. And uh, obviously Timothy faced some struggles and there were things involved in the church that really, in particular people, that, that really placed a lot of fear upon him and he battled with that. But I want us to just think for a moment about fear. I think in the midst of what's going on in the world at the moment, uh, there are a lot of people that might seem to have fear. Maybe you have the fear uh, of contracting the COVID-19 virus, or maybe you are fearful about, um, will I be able to make it the end of the month? Uh, uh, I, I'm fearful this morning. People fear for a lot of things, and there's that acronym that I think um, most of us might be uh, familiar with. Uh, somebody once said fear. Uh, is like false evidence appearing real. False evidence mm -hmm. appearing real. And, and often we, we look at things and it's actually nothing but false evidence. And that's one of the things, uh, church, that, that the Lord uh, warned us against. Because you see, fear comes from the enemy. Fear does not come from God. Mm -hmm. Fear comes from the devil. Yeah. And uh, the Bible is full of verses. They said that there's a... There, there are 365 verses in the Bible that says do not fear or something to that effect. That means there's a, a scripture promise for every day um, that we shouldn't be walking in fear. Amen. And, and, and we need to understand what does fear do to us physically? Fear paralyzes our ability. Mm. Fear um, does things to our physical body mm. um, that that throws it off and out of sync completely. I mean, if you're fearful, we all know that um, a certain amount of fear mm. is, 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 is okay. Um, if, if you are going to be attacked, that, that response that you have, 
you, you need to get away from it. That's normal. But what we're talking about is, is, is some people living in constant fear. Mm. Fear of everything. Yeah. Uh, fear they're not going to make it. Fear, fearful of being sick. Fearful that their marriage is not going to work out. Th mm. This constant fear. And fear is one of the biggest things mm. that the enemy uses mm. to, to keep us in bondage. Mm. Um, and we need to be so conscious of that because mm. a fear is a big thing. Mm. Like I said, fear paralyzes our ability completely. Mm. Um, it paralyzes in such a way that we're not able to function. Mm. That we're not able to function. Amen. That's true. I, I just want, for those that have just tuned in, we're talking about fear. too. so good to see some of my family members. Uh, I saw my cousin online as well. I haven't spoken to him in years. Well, praise God. I'm glad that you tuned in. And all of you watching this morning, uh, let me just remind us of a story this morning in the book of Exodus in the Bible, chapter 1 and verse uh, chapter 2. We read the story of Moses where Moses witnessed a, a, a Hebrew fighting with an uh, Egyptian. And he, he witnessed how, how the, the, uh, they were fighting and then Moses actually stepped in uh, and he killed the Egyptian. And the next day he, he, he saw two Hebrews fighting and... Uh, he was trying to reprimand them, and then the, the whole situation came, became known, and Moses realized that people witnessed it, that he killed an Egyptian. So fear gripped his heart. And the Bible says in Exodus 2 verse 14 that Moses feared. And what did Moses do? He fled to the land of Midian. That's the land of the Midianites. He fled to the land of Midian from Egypt right across the Sinai Desert to the land other side of the Jordan, to the land of Midianites. And you know, family, Moses stayed there, Marlene, for 40 years, looking after the sheep in the back of the desert. But God had a plan for his life. And God wanted Moses to step out. And he may, might have thought that he's never going to hear God again. Because he had fear. Somebody saw something. And fear is a terrible thing. It made Moses run away. And when Moses fled to the, the back desert of Midian, he stayed there. Till the day when God spoke to him from the burning bush. Now this is 40 years later. And now God talks to him. He's 80 years old. And God says to him, I want you to go and deliver my people from bondage. You see, uh, Moses at that time came up with a lot of excuses. But he was living in the land of not enough. That was the land of Egypt. And many people, many of God's people, even you watching this morning, you live in the land of not enough. And then you move to the wilderness where you just have enough. So from not enough to just enough. But God wants you to cross the, the Red Sea to the land of more than enough. The land of, uh, that is God's promised land. Mm -hmm. From the not enough to just enough to more than enough. But you see, I, I find it interesting that most of us, we want to do great things for God. But you know... I believe that many people are, because they are gripped by fear, they prefer to stay in their safe zone. Mm -hmm. And let me say this to you, as long as you stay in your safe zone, you will not experience the blessing, that miraculous divine breakthrough, that divine intervention. Mm -hmm. Because in the safe zone, you've learned to trust on your own things around you. But God wants to take you a step further. He wants to take you out of that safe zone into the unknown. Because it's in the unknown that you will experience the miracle working power of Jesus. Isn't that true? And I, I, I think people have fear for many things. People fear... People fear other people, people fear sickness, people fear the un circumstances, the unknown, people fear death, people fear f that they're going to fail. B one of the biggest fears is the fear I'm going to fail. But this morning we want to encourage you yes. that God wants to bring you to the land of more than enough. Amen. He wants to take you through that Dead Sea. You see, when the Israelites thought it's over, God says, no, I've got bigger plans and bigger promises for you. But you have to listen to me and obey me. And that is where, where God says this morning, do not fear. We need to be filled with faith in our hearts. Amen. And fear mm. blurs our vision. Uh, it blurs it in such a way that we cannot see ahead. Um, and not only does it blur our vision, 
we also then make bad decisions. Mm. So it, it is so important to, to not allow fear to rule and reign in our hearts because mm. it will stop us from reaching our full potential and our destiny, the destiny that God has for us. Amen. Um, and and w- where does fear start? Mm. Fear normally starts with a, with a, with a, with a thought. Mm. With a thought. Mm. The enemy comes and he, he puts a thought in your mind and that's where it starts uh, uh, germinating and starts growing. Mm. And, and, and then the enemy's got you. That's He's right. got you in his hold because yeah. now, instead of focusing on the promises of God's word for your situation, for your circumstance, you are focusing on fear and, and that, that, that wrong seed that mm. the enemy has uh, has, has placed in your mind. Mm. And we've got to be so careful. Amen, for sure. And, and this is the thing, uh, family of God, as you step out into this Tuesday, there might be a lot of uncertainty. There might be a lot of fearful things hanging around us. I think it is, it is normal uh, that we experience it, but the secret is we need to know that it's not in my strength, it's not in my ability, but it's in third Jesus Christ's ability, and he that dwelleth in me that is greater than he that's in the world. There is a scripture that says, perfect love casts out all fear. Now, we understand that perfect love can only come from a perfect son of God. Mm -hmm. So if you know the perfect son of God, the Bible says, if you have the son, you have life. If you do not have the son, you don't have life. So if you know Jesus Christ in a personal relationship, and he that dwelleth in you, as the Bible says, 1 John 4 verse 4, is greater than he that's in the world, Mm -hmm. you can cast out that fear. I, I, I want to take you just to another scripture, and I read this as part of my devotion a few days ago, where the Apostle Paul was actually warned by a prophet by the name of Agabus. And Agabus said to him, Paul, he took the belt of uh, Paul's body, and then he tied his own hands. The prophet tied his own hands with Paul's belt. And then he said to, to the Apostle Paul, the one whose belt this is will be bound when he goes to Jerusalem. And he was referring to Paul. Paul knew what was waiting. And now Paul responds in Acts, the book of Acts chapter 20 and verse 22. Paul says the following. And see, now I go bound in the spirit to Jerusalem. Bound in the spirit to Jerusalem. Not knowing the things that will happen to me there. And that is where a lot of fear comes in. Like Paul. I don't know what is waiting around the next corner. I don't know what's going to happen in a week's time. I don't know what's going to happen in the end of the month. I don't know if that is going to be. I don't know. Neither did the Apostle Paul. But he says, except that the Holy Spirit testify and in every city that we need to go. You see, church, when we are unsure, when we don't know what the future holds, that is when the spirit of fear sometimes comes and preaches to us. And tells us we can't go there. We can't do that. But what did Paul the Apostle do? He rose up in faith. And he did not allow anyone to intimidate him. He didn't allow the emotions to intimidate him. He says, I am going because I've been called for this. This morning, we want to encourage you. Do not let fear grip your hearts. Understand that the opposite of fear is faith. And the Bible says, faith cometh by hearing, hearing the word of God. So when fear grips your heart, I want to say to you, write down a Bible verse. There in our kitchen, right here, in our kitchen, on the chalkboard there. I wrote in the beginning or towards the end of last year, I wrote these words. 2020, our year of breakthrough. And I was looking at it the other day and I thought, God, it doesn't look like breakthrough at the moment because we're in lockdown. But I looked at it and I refused to take it off. I could write anything else here, but I refused because that is the confession of my mouth. It is my year of breakthrough. I want to say to you this morning, the best is yet to come. The enemy might have thought that he's going to keep the church locked down. But I want to say to somebody there this morning that this is going to be our best year ever. Because out of this negativity... There is going to be some spiraling going up. And God is going to bring us into our promised land. Remember what I said. From your land of not enough. To the land of just enough. To the land of more than enough. God wants to bring us into the promised land. 
but we have to go through hardships. The Israelites had to wander around for 40 years in the wilderness. But then a new generation, not a generation that feared, a generation that had faith in their hearts, crossed the Jordan under the leadership of Joshua. So I want to encourage you. We want to share with you this morning. Paul said to Timothy, Therefore, remember that God has not given you a spirit of, of fear, fear, but of power, love, love, amen, and a sound mind. Amen. And also remember, taking every thought captive and yes. bringing it in mm. line with God's word. Amen. That thought um, is not in line with God's word. Reject, Reject it. Yes. It's a lie. Kick it out. Kick it out. Amen. Because if you don't do it and you don't start doing it today, maybe you've been in this trap for so long you don't know how to get out. I'm giving you advice now. Mm. Stop that thought in its track mm. and start confessing the word of God. You see, people, the word is a two edged sword. Mm. The enemy doesn't like that we speak the word of God. Mm. When Jesus was in the wilderness being tempted by Satan, yes. what did he say? Jesus it is written. Said, it is written. It is written. It is written. Amen. And this is God's written word and that we can stand on and be encouraged by. Amen. And, and, and in closing, uh, I think it's the second time I said in closing, uh, but I just want to say this to you. If you have children, you have grandchildren, I said the other day when I ministered, watch the confession of your mouth. Let your child, let your children hear the word of God coming forth from your mouth. Amen. I walk in the house, I quote the word of God, whether my wife listens, she knows that, and she does. We, we speak the word, quote the word, confess the word, Amen. because the devil hates the Bible, he hates the word of God, because he knows that it's through the word of the Lord God in our lives that we will conquer yes. the enemy. Amen. And so I want to encourage you this morning, do not give over to fear. Let your children see, instead of worry, instead of panic, instead of uh, fear, anxiety, whatever the emotion, let them see a mom and dad confessing the word of God. Let them see a mom and dad on their knees praying. Let them join hands and pray. You know what? When that miracle manifests, and it will, they're going to be able to learn valuable lessons. And you will be the teacher uh, of those lessons. May God bless you on this Tuesday morning. Remember to tune in when? On Thursday again, we will have our second devotion for the week. And then again on Friday evening, we have, uh, we have our worship session. And very important, tomorrow evening um, at um, 7.30, we'll have our virtual connect group where mm. we will be talking about the church and the tribulation. So please join in with us. We Amen. love to just connect with you. If you're not sure how to connect on the Zoom app, Please pop my wife, Marlena, SMS or a WhatsApp. I'm sure she will help you. We'd love you to join in and we can be on air for 40 minutes. We won't be longer. Uh, and yeah, I will be talking a little bit about the tribulation. Many people fear, think that we're going to go through the tribulation. Is the tribulation here? So I think there, there are some important things we need to talk about. May the Lord bless you on this Tuesday. And may God keep you and may God make His face to shine upon you. I'm going to ask... My wife this morning, Marlene, she will pray for us and you just come in agreement with us this morning. Father, you're such a gracious God and we just want to give you all the praise and the glory and the honor. Father God, because you say in your word, where mm. two or three people are gathered, you are in the midst Amen. of us. Thank you for your presence this morning, Hallelujah. Father God. Father, I just want to Jesus. pray for each and every person mm. um, out there today, Father yes. God, for those that's been tuned in. I pray, Jesus. Lord Jesus, you know their situations, you mm. know their circumstances. Oh, God. And Father, I pray if there's any fear in anybody's oh, yes. heart this morning, Jesus. that we just want to come against that spirit of mm. fear. Amen. And Father God, that Amen. we will stand on your word yes. now in the name of Jesus, Jesus. Because your word is yea and amen, Hallelujah. Father God. Amen. Your word is is, is your promise to us, Hallelujah. Father, that you will never leave us, that you will never forsake yes. us. Amen. And Father, I pray that you will be with each and every one of Jesus, us today. Bless our we pray for Lord. your blood over yes. us, that you will just cover us. Mm. And Father, that we know that under your wings, mm. we are safe. Hallelujah. Just bless us today, Father God, mm. as we go our separate and our different ways. And 
Thank you for this opportunity we've had just to share around your word. Mm. We love you, Jesus. Jesus. We honor you and we praise you for you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We give you all the praise and all the glory Mm -hmm. in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen Amen. and amen. Before we turn switch off, just one request. I want to ask that we all pray together also for our country, uh, for the church in particular, nationally. Uh, at the moment, there are there, 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 there is a huge outcry from pastors, churches, uh, that we would want to have a little bit of leeway that we will be able to visit our church even under situations, but that we will be able to do at least some recordings and things like that from the church. And uh, so I just want you to pray that we trust God, that the government will be lenient and that mm-hmm. God will mm-hmm. allow us to be able at least to broadcast from our churches, mm-hmm. which will make things definitely much easier. So we appreciate your prayers. Listen, you have your wonderful day. God bless you. Enjoy the day. Remember, we love you. God loves you. And, and expect, expect your, your miracle. miracle. Amen. God bless. Bye-bye.